So Ritesh, your film is a big hit. It's going all around festivals all around the world. Um, I saw it at Cannes. I think the first screening in Cannes was at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I remember we had a 10 or 15 minute standing ovation at Cannes Film Festival. And uh, it's just gone on from strength to strength. Could you just tell us a bit about the original inspiration for the story? And obviously the film's about uh, the dubbers, the uh, lunchboxes. But how did you come about writing this particular script? Well, uh, in 2007, uh, I was trying to make a documentary about the Dabbawalas that you saw in the film. And uh, I had embedded myself with them for a couple of days. I was, there's, there's been lots of good documentaries about them, about the process, about the coding. I think BBC made one as well that I saw and I loved. Uh, and I wanted to find a personal story. I wanted to find a character within them uh, to follow. And uh, instead of that, I kind of found this story. Uh, I became friends with them and they started telling me sort of germs of stories. Uh, they, uh, like things like, you know, this housewife takes too long because, you know, she tries something new every day. In, in so-and-so house, the mother-in-law rules. Uh, so I just became more interested in that. So I, I sort of quit the documentary uh, and uh, started working on the script. You've got a great uh, ensemble cast here. You've got some of the greats of Indian film, independent actors involved with the film. Could you just tell us a bit about how you got uh, Urfan Khan and Vazadin and uh, Nimrat Kaur involved with the production? It was a real blessing, actually, and uh, it was all very, very organic. Like with the, when I finished the first draft of the f of the script that was working for me on the page, I, I sort of knew I wanted Irfan in it, who plays Sajan Fernandez, and then Nawaz, who plays Sheikh, um, and because they're wonderful actors, and of course, like everyone else, I've followed their work. Um, and uh, with Irfan, uh, I had this spiel ready, you know, uh, about why he should do this film. So I got the script to him via the producers, and I had this whole. I literally wrote down, you know, a spiel. Uh, it'd be like, you know, because I had, he liked the script and he wanted to meet me. And I thought I was going to deliver this, you know, sort of inspirational thing about why he should do this movie. Kind of like, you know, what Mel Gibson does in Braveheart, you know, you must fight. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, uh, but I didn't have to, we met and then we shook hands and then it ended up being like a five hour meeting. We tapped through the script and then he was doing it. Uh, but I did tell him the spiel in Khan, you know, once the film premiered and I was like, you know, I always wanted to tell you why you should do the film. And, uh, <laughs> So that's when I got to give it to him. Uh, and Nawaz was the same. He, he just you know, read the script and then uh, he was kind of like, when are we shooting, when are we shooting, when are we shooting? But it was great, it was a great collaboration. We met several times. We had like six months of prep before we shot and with both actors and also with Nimrit. Nimrit comes from theater. I saw her in a play called Baghdad Wedding in Bombay, uh, the, in the Bombay version of Baghdad Wedding. And she played Luma in it and she was one wonderful and we met and you know, then she came on board, and but with all the actors, like as they were preparing to get into the part, uh, I was rewriting and getting the script closer to them. Like Irfan had told me about his uncle that he lived with in Bombay when he first moved there. That's how he found his way into the story, because his uncle had a mundane job like Sajan. Uh, so all sort of the things he would tell me about his uncle, I would go in and rewrite, and you know, bring it closer and closer to him. So it was a really nice, organic collaboration, yeah, real blessing. So in terms of your audience, were you thinking of a global audience or an Indian audience? Because they're quite different in terms of marketing and, and making films like this. I mean, that's one of the big challenges for Indian filmmakers, for example. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we thought while we were making the film that they are quite different, you know, as you said. But it's been a real surprise. Like, the film released in India five weeks ago, and it's still in theatres. Um, it's, it's playing in 300 screens in India, and it's, it's a big success in India. Uh, so it, it was a real sort of surprise to us that, you know, I think Indian audiences has move, have moved ahead of the establishment in so many ways. Uh, so yeah, but my thought was, because I've lived away from India for like 14 years, I just moved back to Bombay. Uh, and uh, so m my sort of life has been, uh, you know, a sort of a global citizen. Uh, so my, my sort of sensibility and thought was that I'm making the film to tell a story to the world. But, you know, it, it turns out that, you know, you can leave India, but India doesn't leave you. So it's... Uh, <laughs> It, it really worked in India. I mean, it's an amazing ensemble of also production companies from all over the world. Could you just tell us a bit about how you raise the finances or help, help raise the finances for this project, project over many, many different territories? Yeah, actually, I didn't do that. You know, the wonderful producers did that. I just got to spend the money they raised. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was it, to raise money for a film like this, 100% from India, but preserving its sort of integrity is very difficult, uh, you know, because you you didn't even have to put songs in it. And, uh, but uh, uh, so like most of the money came from India and the rest came from France and Germany. So we had French and German co-producers and then I did post for the film in Germany and France. Uh, 
the composers, German, Max Richter, wonderful composer. We also did the sound design for the film in Germany, and we colored the film in France. Uh, and the editor is American, and the DOP is American. So, I mean, it was just the raising money from everywhere also sort of gives you an opportunity to collaborate with uh, so many you know, wonderful people from around the world. Great, great idea. And could you just tell us about this, the cinematography is quite beautiful in the film, very delicately done, and, uh, and the framing. Could you just tell us a bit about your work with the DOP? Yeah, his name is Michael Simmons, uh, and uh, he has he works with the director called Ramin Baharani regularly. And I'd been following Michael's work for many years, and then uh, uh, when I got a chance to make this film, I really wanted him to be a part of it, because you know, I felt that we shared like sort of a sensibility. And uh, he would, uh, the wonderful thing about Michael is that he, he believes in sort of serious prep. And uh, he came down to India for the first time, two months before the shoot. So for two months, you know, we, we broke down the script several times, and I was always writing and rewriting. And uh, we went to locations, uh, locations would fall through, and we would go to new locations. But just, uh, it was a great incentive for me to work with him, just, you know, sort of, he has a wonderful eye, and he sees things, like, because I'm Indian and I'm from Bombay, uh, he saw things that I didn't see, because he came with a fresh eye. And also just the degree of prep we put into it, you know, I think it really paid off. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, it felt very organic uh, because the part of Bombay, he's from Bandra, where I grew up, it's a, it's a Catholic neighborhood and his home life and it would be in English and his, everyone's work life is mostly in English. Uh, so it just felt very organic and true to the, to the city and to the character to, to have his voiceovers in English. But that was a big sort of debate uh, during production as well. But, you know, um, Irfan and I always, you know, felt that that was the right thing to do. Uh, and it, it's very, it's sort of very local and specific, and uh, uh, and and maybe uh, not everyone will get it, you know, because it's a very local detail. You know, this specific neighborhood in Bandra, which is in Bombay, and everyone's sort of life is in English. Because in India, we have a dual existence. You know, we speak in Hindi at home or our language at home, and we speak in English outside. Uh, but for his particular neighborhood, they they speak in English. Um, but you know, uh, we were all about trying to be local and specific because only then can you, you know, be you, if you're true to the local, and then you know the audience will trust that you are true to the universal as well. You, yeah, uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think filmmaking, you know, the whole exercise of filmmaking is, you know, uh, pissing off people you know to impress those you'll never meet. Uh, <laughs> So, I think this, <laughs> they're already pissed off at me, so, uh, yeah, but of course, you know, everything sort of comes from within, and then, you know, the actors bring themselves to the, to the part, so it's, it's, it's based on people I know, people, you know, the actors know, and it's an amalgamation of, you know, the real, you know, which, you know, you can't, you can't really come up with, with, you know, things like that, I think. But there's so many sort of things that I grew up with, like in Bombay when we used to know our neighbors, you know, actually know them. Uh, people used to pass things by baskets, you know, all the time. So that always stayed with me, you know. My mom used to interact with people like that. So there's, there's a lot of elements in the story that are based on real people. No, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's the goal is, you know, uh, in, in sort of my little insignificant life, it, the goal is just, you know, a good story well told and uh, the hope that people bring themselves to it and it makes them think of something. And, you know, I'm glad it made you think of this, but, you know, I don't really have a message, honestly. Uh, I, honestly, I don't really have a message. I just hope that, you know, I could tell a story that came from within me and it stays with you for, you know, hours or years or days or weeks and, and uh, however long it stays with you, you know. Danis is a part owner of the French co-production company that came on board this film and they helped to raise like, a significant part of the budget. And uh, Danis always loved the script and uh, I met him via the French co-producer uh, who's his business partner. And uh, he was just, uh, I met him once uh, before we started shooting and then I met him in Cannes. And he's just been a, a big champion of the film, you know. He's uh, uh, really been a big ambassador for the film. He's loved the project since the beginning. and. Uh, and even though like we, we make different kinds of films, you know he's uh, he's a real uh, uh, a real sort of force behind making this film happen. Um, so you know we uh, 
filmmakers being generous to other filmmakers. You know, it's uh, it's something that I didn't, I didn't, I had not expected. But you know, it's, it's a real, real joy, joy to know him and and you know, sort of have that friendship. Yeah, what I'm working on next, I'm trying to write something uh, that's set in uh, Delhi. Uh, it's a st it's a love story of sorts uh, about a cop and his wife. Um, so, but I, you know, the writing process is just a process of discovery. So I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, but I'm I'm trying to write. Uh, but it's a real blessing that the film is traveling and it's getting released everywhere, which also means that I have to go everywhere. Uh, so it's tough to tough to sort of work. But uh, but that's what I'm working on next. That's what I want to make next. I think.